James Edward Buckner was born on November 6, 1923, in Johnson City, Tennessee, but would spend most of his growing up years in Burnsville, North Carolina. He was the first of five children born to parents Alvin and Bonnie Buckner. Four siblings would follow, Bill, Joanne, Carolyn, and Jack. His father was a barber. His mother stayed at home tending to the family and making sure they did well in school and were all in church on Sunday. According to Jim, Burnsville was a lot like Mayberry in The Andy Griffith Show, and he could remember many times going down to the local filling station to buy an RC cola and a moon pie and stand around talking with town characters just like Barney and Gomer. After graduating from high school, Jim took a job as a radio repairman. It was around then that his interest in gospel music first began. When I'd be driving home from work at night, there was this quartet on the radio, the Harmoneers from Knoxville, Tennessee, and they were on WROL. I'd listen to them, and I thought, that's pretty good stuff, and I got sort of got hooked on it then, listening to it. It was around this time in his early 20s that Jim's life would be changed forever when a traveling evangelist who was holding a revival in town caught his attention. At one of the services, he came forward and was saved. It would turn out to be his first step in a lifelong dedication to serving the Lord. At the outbreak of World War II, Jim moved to Akron, Ohio, finding a job in the factories building Corsair airplanes for the war effort. He would settle there for good following the war with wife Louise and son Jerry. As a family, they attended the Akron Baptist Temple and became members of the choir. This was Jim's first experience singing, and the bass part seemed to come natural to him. Around 1951, Jim was invited to sing in his first quartet, the Gospel Tones, a group formed by Frank Neal, choir director at the Ritman Baptist Temple in Ritman, Ohio. Frank would eventually become a minister, and he and Jim would become lifelong friends. John Neal, who was the choir director, he loaned me to Frank Neal, and who was working out of Ritman, Ohio. He was a music director down there, and they formed a quartet there, and that was my first quartet with him. At his first public appearance singing in the group, Jim said he didn't shake hands with anyone out of embarrassment because he was so scared his palms were covered in nervous perspiration. But Jim overcame his fears and stayed with the Gospel Tones over the next few years through several personnel changes and a new name, the Gospel Heirs. The group made numerous appearances and eventually caught the attention of evangelist Rex Humbard, who was establishing his church in Akron, much to the disdain of Dallas Billington, founder and powerful pastor of the Akron Baptist Temple. We were we were th- with Rex for a while. We were banned from the Baptist Temple for going and singing for Rex. So he told us we, we went and sang for Rex Humbard. We couldn't sing at the Baptist Temple. He kept his word. We didn't sing out there for, for years after that. Jim continued to sing with various groups until 1968, when he found a home with a group called the Evangel Heirs. They asked me if I would uh, join them saying their bass singer had quit, I guess. They wanted to try full-time, so uh, I worked and worked at it until finally that one day we did. The marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the street. All the builders' tools are silent. No more time to harvest But as Jim soon learned, going on the road full-time has its ups and downs. Oh, we went down to West Virginia one time for something. We were up on this mountain in rent and Texas had forgotten to, uh, he was in the group at the time, and he'd forgotten to put fuel in the bus, you know, and the thing went. Uh, ran out of fuel up there, and we had to push it to turn it around and drift back down the hill. And uh, Sammy said, now there's prestige for you pushing the bus across West Virginia. By the late 70s, the Evangelaires had disbanded. Now, remarried to Helena, Jim continued to sing with various groups over the years. 
As the twentieth century was winding down, Jim was cranking up in a whole new direction he had never dreamed of, as host of a radio show called Gospel Memories. Well, the guy who was doing it uh, at the time, Harold Pickens was the guy. And uh, Harold is, he was going to North Carolina, and he was doing uh, Gospel Memories on uh, WTOF. And um, so he put my name in, you know, said that I could do it, you know. I'd never done anything like that. It never occurred to me I could do anything like that. And so they called me from the station and said that uh, Harold had uh, given them my name. And I, so I went, went over and started. I had to have help with some of their, from some of their people, you know, to get started. So I know what I was doing. So they materialized, and I was on there for a year or so, you know. That soon led to TV appearances with Bruce Wells, host of Down Home Gospel. Well, that was the Statesman's Quartet, presented by Jim Butner tonight. And Jim, I appreciate you bringing the videos tonight. Wow, that was great footage. I thought it would give us all a good idea of just how great the Statesmen were back then. If you notice, they just used that one mic, that old CBS mic, I believe it was. Right. And you can imagine if we, if they had, could come back today and uh, on the high tech equipment that we have today and the, how they'd sound, you know. Oh, they'd as be good something as they were else. Then. Yeah. Sure. Great quartet. Great Absolutely. Quartet. In addition to singing gospel music, Jim loves to hear good gospel music and attends many of the local concerts. It was at one of these concerts he abruptly became a new member of the Glory Way Quartet. Just, I just went to hear him sing, you know, and one of the fellows in the group at the time uh, that knew me uh, asked me if I would come up and sing a couple songs with him, that their bass singer wasn't there and hadn't showed up, and next thing I know, I'm up there, I'm singing with him, and uh, just old songs with everybody knows, and uh, so then uh, uh, later on, they uh, called me and asked me if I was interested in being in the group because the, uh, their bass singer had quit. I said yes, and that was about the time they they had a, a an engagement in South Carolina, and they wanted me to go, and I would never had even had practice with them. We went all the way down there, and still no practice. They set up a sound system in late afternoon of, of that day, and we went ran over six songs uh, that we were going to sing, and somehow it worked out. Mm -hmm. 